Your team is losing faith. Your boss is breathing down your neck. Your project is literally under fire, but what if I told you that you can turn that all around in just days? One of the, one, one of the main things you're doing right now is actually probably making your situation worse. And what if the key to saving your project, your career, is something you've been overlooking all along? If you're new to the episode, I go by the name of ED. For all you smart and intelligent folks out there, that just simply means Ed. I have an eight-point framework, and these eight points, my goal, my job, my mission today is to unpack today's episode. Today's episode is entitled, What Do You Do When, leader, when Your Leadership Is Under Fire As A Project Manager? Family, I remember the first time my leadership was under fire. See, I was leading this project and I was super excited because I knew for a fact that I had all the stakeholders on board. I knew there was no disagreements, no gruntles, no issues, no anything, but I was sadly mistaken. I got on the phone with this stakeholder just to ensure because I was already forewarned by another project manager that worked with this stakeholder that said, hey, you want to make sure that you document with this stakeholder because they will get on the phone and say one thing and then do another. And I said, no, we've had plenty of conversations and I don't see that. But you know what? I will take heed to your consultation. So we got on the phone. We had, we're, on a, we're having a conversation. We both agreed verbally of what we were going to do with this particular project. I asked, is there anything else that you're going to need to help to ensure that once we submit the ticket that's required to make this project happen that you'll be willing to sign off no problem he, he confirmed with me i said also so i didn't even send a follow-up or anything like that because again i wanted to give this person the benefit of the doubt the question is the doubt what i failed to realize is that after that conversation i went to submit the information that was required and it was rejected i was confused so I quickly messaged the uh, stakeholder. I said, hey, I, I, I thought when we were on the phone, you, we both were aligned and we agreed that this is it, that we were going to move in this direction. He said, I changed my mind. I said, ooh. Family, a lot of times what's going to happen in this thing that I love, that I hope you fall in love with called project management, people are going to say one thing and do another. They're going to mean one thing and do another. You have to prepare yourself mentally, emotionally, I, I should say, as well as professionally how to address this because it's going to happen throughout your career. And not every stakeholder is going to be like the one I'm descri describing currently. However, I want to give you some tactics. I want to give you some strategies to how to address that because what's going to happen is your leadership will be attacked because even though it says project manager, you are the leader, you are the coach, you are the focal point of this project. So let's jump into my eight point framework to see how this works for you, family. Point number one, you already know because I'm already going back to the book. If you haven't got your copy of the Magnetic Project Manager, please pick you up a copy. It's in Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and anywhere uh, books are sold. Let's get right into it. Communicate transparent. One of the things in project management you're going to have to uh, get a grasp of and even embrace is the ability to communicate, but communicate and be transparent in your communication. So one of the things I would recommend is schedule uh, meetings with your key stakeholders, present the current situations, challenges, as well as the action plans. Here's an actionable uh, tip on top of what I just shared with you. Be honest about the mistakes and shortcomings, but that is the key word. No, actually, it's part of the key word, but focus on the solution, which you always hear me talk about here. If you listen to any of these episodes, I always say a lot of times stakeholders, even including myself, I can get so much consumed by the problem that we can lose sight or foresight of what is actually the solution to solve that problem. So I recommend family that once you understand what the problem is, that you do any and everything to take all of that energy to focus on the solution to help drive or, excuse me, lead that project forward. Let's move on to point number two. 
This is a big one for me, family, because sometimes I have my moments. See, I always told you one of the things here that I hope that you loved about me is that I'm very transparent. I haven't got it right. All, I have never gotten it right all the time. I have imperfections. And this point right here, sometimes I've had moments where when disbelief, like I shared with the stakeholder when we were on the phone, we both agreed that this is what it is that they were going to approve it. And then they did something totally different and never communicated back to me that they've changed their mind. So number two, maintain your composure. Stay calm and professional in all interactions. Remember, family, that emotional reactions can exacerbate the situation. Here's an actionable step. I, I do my best to practice this, so I'm being transparent. Take deep breaths and practice stress management type techniques. One of the things I recommend is meditation, even if it's for a minute or two, or just taking a walk. Get up from your area where you're working at and just walk somewhere just to calm down. And before you send that scathing or as we call it, a nasty gram email response, walk away and then come back. If you have that same energy, get up again and walk away again. Because again, you want to maintain that professionalism, even though they're out of character, you don't need to get out of character. One of the things one of uh, a manager shared with me a while back and I've stuck with this and I know it's so true because I've leveraged it many times over and over again. And they said, listen, when you have two people arguing from a distant, no one can tell which one is the fool. Translation, when you're going back and forth with someone, someone is intentionally trying to make you into the fool, to make you lose everything you worked hard for, everything that you've dedicated and made a commitment to as a project manager. Let's move on to point number three. So assess the situation objectively. First thing you want to do, family, is gather the facts and data about the criticism or challenges you're up against. Identify root causes of the issues, not surface level, root causes. And then what you want to do, here's an actionable tip. Separate emotions from the actual facts to gain a clearer perspective of what you need to do and move forward. Point number four. Develop a action plan. Create a detailed plan to address and identify these issues. Set clear, measurable goals and timeline. One of the things I love doing when I do this is assign a responsibility and ensure, here's the biggest thing, this is the gotcha. Ensure that you get a team buy-in. Sometimes you may even have to get signatures just to ensure that if someone circles back and say, no, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. Here's your signature. This is the date we discussed it. This is the date of the, you just very detailed because in certain situations, you will have stakeholders that will switch up on you. Let's move on point number five, enhance communication channels. One of the things also, I don't really advise so many communication channels, but find two to three if possible, if you can manage those many communication channels. One of the things is emails, meetings, using Teams or Asana, whatever the various platforms is. And ensure all this information can flow smoothly up and down across the organization. Also, here's an actionable tip. Implement regular status updates and progress reports and make sure these progress reports are not fluff. Make sure they're very transparent, exactly where the project is. I know a lot of people don't like to do that, or excuse me, a lot of project managers don't like to report exactly where it is because sometimes you get feedback that is not even important, but it's worth it because what's going to happen if you hide this information and then it gets to a point you have to escalate the first question or the first three questions. One of the first three questions is going to be, why you didn't come to us sooner? You're not just now finding this out, are you? So ensure you report accur accurately, no matter how bad it looks on the team and yourself, you need to do this, family. Point number six, you already know we coming with it. Documentation, or yeah, I was going to say documentation over conversation, but document all issues. Keep a detailed log of incidents, complaints, and criticism. That is huge, family. When you're able to do it, one of the things I, I love to use is a RAID Q log, especially when it comes to decisions. And when I was thinking of putting this episode to, together, I was like, I don't, I need to document better when it comes to the criticisms or the complaints, 
because what you can do is now you're prepared and who's saying this stuff. So when you're up leading another project, more than likely you might have one of the same stakeholders that was part of your previous project. So you already know what you're up against. And when you use this log, you're going to be able to identify patterns. Is this person, does this person really have, are they, is this stakeholder really coming with true good intent? Or is it something deeper than that where they may not just like you or they're literally trying to sabotage, to sabotage the project because they're jealous of the impact. Ooh, I like this. The impact or influence that you're having within the organization as well as within your team of the stakeholders. Let's move on to point number seven. Improve the decision making process. You know, I never understand when I'll see project managers get into a silo situation where they're creating all these artifacts in a silo situation or they're not really evolving key stakeholders in the important decision making process. As I recommended before, using the RAID Q log, if you don't know what those acronyms stands for, risk, action item, issue, decision, and the Q is for question. So being able to, to involve stakeholders in important de uh, decision making it allows them to have more of a buy-in, to have your back as you're having theirs, and document and communicate the rationale behind these actual decisions. Here's an actionable tip. Implement a structured decision-making framework. Let's move on to point number eight. This is one of my favorite. Build stronger relationship. Foster a culture of trust and mutual respect. Here's an actionable tip for you, family. Invest in one-on-one -on -one interactions with team members as well as stakeholders and be genuine about it, genuine about the interest and the perspective as well as their concerns. And always recommend when you get on the call with one of your stakeholders in a one-on-one -on -one situation, don't automatically just go in and talking about the actual project. Ask them how they're doing. Ask them about their family, their weekend, their weekday. Talk, build a genuine relationship and then uh, transition into the actual project. Here's my, here's, I have a bonus for you. Actually, I got two for you today. I'm feeling that great. Address conflict proactively. One of the things I recommend is using a conflict resolution techniques, like to find a win solution. How can we both win in this situation? What are you willing to give up? What am I willing to give up to, so we can meet in the middle? And document this conflict resolution and follow up with that stakeholder to ensure that we're still aligned on what we agreed on and also identify and mediate conflicts within your team or your stakeholders. When you are in your meetings, there may be stakeholders that they just, they, they always go with each other and you want to make sure when to allow that to happen and then when to shut all that down. If I see that as a consistent problem, you want to be able to pull one of them, both of them aside and meet with them one on one to figure out what is going on before you take this next step, is, which would be going to their um, manager to have a conversation with, hey, if this continues to happen, we may need to find another one of your direct reports because what they're doing is inter interrupting the flow of how the project team is working together. My last and final bonus is embrace reporting and visibility. Provide regular data-rich driven updates to senior management and be proactive, family. Be proactive in highlighting both successes and challenges. I have these three closing remarks, family. These three closing remarks are the things that I really believe out of everything we discussed today will really have an impact in what you're doing as a project manager. Point number one, assess the situation objectively. Like I said, you want to be able to separate your emotions from the facts. Get a clear understanding of what's going on. Point number two, document all issues. Keep a very detailed log of incidents, complaints, as well as criticism. And the last and final point is maintain that professional composure. Stay calm. Stay professional in all interactions. Family, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Again, I go by the name of E.D., I truly appreciate the opportunity to present this information to you today. I hope it helps someone out there. I hope it helps many people out there today because really these are the type of things if you decide to get in this thing that I love, that I hope you fall in love with called project management that you may be up against. 
now that you'll be able to take this information and put it in your tool belt to be prepared if any of this happens. Until next time, I'm out.